cementing herself as WNBA Rookie of the Year by dominating Angel Reese to the point where she stole Angel's home court advantage by hyping up the crowd. And in enemy territory gets this kind of salute as she exits the game. Caitlin Clark has saved the WNBA, but in addition to finding out how she's brought the W to new heights, you'll also find out how that's came at a price. Social media views for the WNBA were up 380%, much thanks to the savior Clark Kent, yet somehow Caitlyn's received the opposite of respect for bringing that attention to the league. Stay tuned. Just wanted to say thank you for staying loyal throughout my time off from uploading as I've been dealing with a lot mentally over the past few months, but I should be back in full swing, albeit managing my workload better for the long term. Having said that, splash subscribe and thumbs up if you haven't already, plus check in by commenting down below. Again, I appreciate you tremendously. Back to the content. Caitlin Clark dropped a career high in both points and assists on the road against the Sky, proving she's not only the best rookie in the WNBA, but the most exciting player in it overall. Also from a league-wide perspective, Clark dropped the first 30-plus point, 12-plus assist game in the league's history. Having already broken the rookie record for threes made, Clark's also tied with Sabrina Ionescu for the league lead in three-pointers made per game, while fellow rookie Angel Reese leads the league in rebounds per night plus owns the most double-doubles by a rookie in WNBA history, Clark's top-notch playmaking is displayed by the fact that she leads the W in assists per night. But when it comes to finesse, it's not even a discussion between Angel and Caitlin as Reese is on paper the least efficient finisher around the basket among all players, while Clark's average three-point shooting distance of 28.04 feet is higher than a few of the NBA's top marksmen in Trey Young, Damian Lillard, and Stephen Curry's in the seasons where they shot the furthest out from on average. In what's been an undeniably historical first campaign as a pro, on top of making the most threes by a rookie ever, Clark set the single-season rookie mark for assists, the single-game record for assists, and recorded the first triple-double in Indiana Fever history. Her ability to let it fly in traffic off the dribble from as far as she lets it fly from is something the W's never seen before, and from a general basketball perspective, that ability is also few and far between. In terms of strictly this woman's range, and as I mentioned, the consistency of how deep she lets it fly from, it's something no player can match either in the W or NBA. However, amidst this previously unheard of by the WNBA standards type success, Caitlyn's simultaneously been the victim of some unnecessary targeting in terms of non-basketball plays being made at her expense. Thing is, the way Clark's getting hit goes beyond what could be considered out of position aggressive fouling and nears the range of assault level aggression. Time after the next, many opponents across the WNBA haven't represented themselves well whatsoever, dishing out cheap shots to the star that's primarily responsible for bringing attention to the league. It's actually insane how many times caitlyn has been unnecessarily hit, yet she hasn't let that stop her from setting records. The long-term impact of these constant hits she's taken is seemingly disregarded by opponents, and it's quite frankly blasphemous. That is blasphemous. You could argue the biggest punk of them all here has been Kennedy Carter, who body checked Clark from behind earlier in the season with no regard for human life, and also had this to say. Kennedy, on the play before bumping in with Caitlyn, it seemed like she she turned to you a little bit um, yeah. after the after the fever score. I answered with... no Caitlyn Clark questions. But I'd say the biggest WNBA hooligan, with all due respect, has been Angel Reese, whose rivalry with Clark, of course, goes back to college but from clotheslining Clark around the basket, to getting away with shoving her out of the way under the basket, to cheering on the bench when Kennedy Carter pulled off the hit from behind on Clark, for one of the bigger stars in the league to have acted like that just isn't a good look. I get there's a rivalry, but there's certain lines that just shouldn't be crossed, and also a certain way a top player in any given league should be representing themselves. It's unfortunate we can't strictly be promoting the utter stardom from Clark, and have to talk about the sickening extracurriculars, but given one of the cheap shots I'm referring to happened in the Indiana Fever's most recent game right here, this type of deliberately reckless targeting needs to stop, so it had to be not just brought up, but heavily covered. 
This type of stuff is just not a good look for the WNBA, and until this aggression stops, the overall league as a whole isn't going to be fully respected. Let me know your take on this down below. Splash thumbs up if you enjoyed and want more. Subscribe so you don't miss a single basketball list, story, prediction, and more if you're new. This was D-Flow. Have a great one, and see you next video.